Hey guys, welcome to the studio. I'm super excited. Today is all about like a synthesizer that I've been kind of building, creating. It's using ex existing stuff that you all know, but combining it in a way I just absolutely love it. First, a couple of quick announcements. My song that I made with my other project against the AI was in the top 10 for almost three weeks. It's now at spot 11. We're, we're going down, unfortunately, but still a huge success. Huge success. Thank you to everyone out there supporting me by getting the song, playing it also on Spotify. It's doing really amazing, especially if you consider it's a new project. If there are no followers. If you're interested, I'll link it down below. Then I was one week kind of gone. I uh, was a little sick, so no videos. But if you followed me on Instagram, you probably saw I made an entire video, one hour, more than an hour, one hour and 20 minutes on uh, Hofa. It's like a German channel, but it's in English. That's the first time I did something so long where you don't have to pay for it. So it's a free tutorial, almost one and a half hours. So if you want to go check it out, it's also linked down below in the description. Enough with the announcement stuff. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we had like a giveaway, but we contacted all of the people that won. So if you have an email by me or Andy, then congratulations. If not, better luck next time. We had over 20, 20 people actually winning um, plugins and all this kind of stuff coming up very soon again. But yeah, let's jump over here. This right here is the Slum Fatty. It's an analog synthesizer, I think around like 15 years old. And it, I, as far as I could like see online, it was the last one where Bob Moog or Moog or whatever was still working on. A legend in synth making, he made this beast right there, which is by far the best synthesizer ever created. Out of all of the stuff I own, all of the stuff I will ever own, that's the one that just sounds the rawest, the most brutal, and is really defining my, my music that I make at the moment. The only downside of it, I mean, yes, it's super expensive, but at least it kind of keeps the value. On top of that, it's not polyphonic. It's just you press on one voice, that's it. This one right here is also monophonic, but you can poly chain them. I got four units right here. And like, just like, it's the best part. Switching preset on one, so it's just a preset on all of them. And I've, I've been like, that, that's what I do the entire day. It's so cool. I love it. 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 Advantages of it. You get a polyphonic MOOC for a lot less. All of these units are around 550 to 600. Maybe they, they'll go up probably soon, 700 plus. But it's still way less expensive than the only polyphonic Moog that is right now available, the one, which is like super expensive. So all you do is just plug in MIDI in there, MIDI to the next one, MIDI to the next one, to the next one, MIDI from the computer to all of them. And then I, I turn I turn the cutoff, it changes on all of them. I mean, look, it's so cool. Turning one and all other three follows. This is true for every single setting. If I go to resonance, by the way, that's that's maybe one of the downsides. Not every function has an op. So cutoff resonance, they share this one. So I can switch between. If I'm in cutoff, all the other ones are also on cutoff. You can see it moving. If I go to resonance, just this one is the one you can see moving. But the other ones, trust me, they're also moving. It just works. It's fantastic. And to spice it up, because I was then like, OK, it's polyphonic, nice, cool. You can play chords with it, up to four voices easy but what else can you do i hope you can read the display and it's not like blinking like crazy but yeah let's go to um master then to the settings for the poly midi setup course a one down and then you can choose which one of the polyphonic ones it should be so it's now set to number one if you press a key the first sound comes out of this unit and then of course the next unit we get the same thing it's two out of three out of four and four out of four. And that's basically the standard way to use them. Everyone is playing a note. Everyone is playing a voice. If you hit a key four times, it goes through all four of them. And you can hear they're still slightly <laughs> detuned, 
because I just turned them I turned them on. They need like 10, 15 minutes to warm up a little to be more stable, but this instability won't go away 100%. It's there. Those four units, they also sound slightly different. All of this actually adds to the rawness that I love so much about the original Mini Moog. Then on top of that, something no other synth can basically do is I can set up the, the cutoff right here. It changes on all of the notes. Let me grab my very professional keyboard. And for example, I can like, I, I can play a chord. Maybe get it a little more. I can filter all of them, obviously, but now some voices I can open up again. So you can set up every note individually fully, usually control all of the voices with one, but here every single thing an analog synth owns is individual per voice. You can have one with a lot of release, one with a short attack, long attack, and create like really weird kind of sounds. When you're playing a chord, this doesn't make as much sense, but you can also go here into the settings and just switch it to one of one. You then have to repeat it on all of them, which is a lot of annoying. I wish there would be like one to set them all up, but that's just the way it is. I've done it already. All four are on one of one. So all four playing the same note. And that's basically what you can do. I mean, you need then four inputs into your DAW, which is kind of annoying, but I, I came up with a little solution that solves all of it, adds the one thing that I was missing about it, but also will get me into a whole lot of trouble. I'll let you know, but probably you'll be able to figure it out yourself at the very end of the video. Um, let's check it out. I got here the Rack Brood 6U version by Aturia. It's uh, the black version, which I really like. Build quality, excellent. You have this little stand right here. You can um, buy two of them, put them on top of each other, and this one protects them from each other, which is really nice. Totally over-engineered. I mean this completely as, as, uh, as a compliment. And I got two little units right here. We got a mini stereo mixer. So all four mugs can be controlled right here, the volume of them, and the pan. And that's where it gets really, really exciting. So I can pan one right, one left, one right, one left. So good. Like, uh, wait, I need to, I need to record the audio so you can also hear it in stereo. Okay, stereo, two left, two right. All four back to, to mono, to, uh, not mono, to the middle which basically makes that mono, but whatever. I like it. The one thing that I was missing is the noise. I love noise in my music. I love like noise it just has to be in there, especially if you open up the cutoff and the noise comes in, it just sounds epic. It can output noise. I think it was a, a software update back then. I don't know how they did it because I think the unit actually doesn't have like a noise generating unit in there. So they maybe fed it something like a sample. It sounds really bad. So I got this other unit right here. This little device right here creates the white noise or pink noise or it's just an off mode. You can turn the volume up and down and it generates two. Those two, let's turn them both on. Oh wait. On, on, okay, perfect. Those two go into the first two units. Yes, noise. Sounds good, sounds really epic. I love it, I have like full control. I can pan it left and right, stack them, play chords, not play chords. 
it's uh it's good i like it it's probably the cheapest way to get a real analog fully fully polyphonic moog i think it's the cheapest ever possible the prices are still fairly low i think they're a little below what they sold back then so uh Try to get your hands on it. It would be also my recommendation if you if you want to have like a kind of vintage. It's not really, really vintage. It's in between. But if you want to have like a fully analog synth for the lowest possible price, I would actually go with one of them over everything that is available right now on the market. So if you can get your hands on, good luck. I'm, I'm trying to get some more. <laughs> so... Uh... Maybe I'll delay this video by a couple of days and, and see what I can still grab. Anyways, thanks all for watching. I hope you liked this video. Again, if you want a full tutorial, one hour plus, go check out the Hofa channel, link down below. If you want to listen to the music of my new project and support it, also link down below. And yeah, another episode coming really, really soon. Ooh, and by the way, before I forget it, you, you, I, I, I told you I'm in trouble. I'll just show you and then then you'll know. Let me know in the comments if you get it, but it's a big, big, big problem. Uh, yeah. You see?